right, y'all, welcome back. So I have picked up a new vehicle. Uh, what you guys see here is a 1995 Chevrolet G20 Mark III conversion van, and it is in very, very, very good condition. Uh, I found this a couple hours north for me uh, in Iowa. This was a Tennessee van originally. It spent most of its life in Tennessee. And then the last few years it has been in Iowa and it has done some traveling. Uh, this has a V6 engine and a four speed transmission. So it is as slow as a turtle, but it only has about 105,000 miles on it. And uh, I'll give you guys a walk around here and we'll go over some of the other stuff. But it is in amazing condition. This has probably been garage kept its entire life. And uh, the previous owners have taken very, very good care of it. So why don't we take a look? So 1995 was the last year of this body style in the G20. G30 was available through 1996 before they changed the newer body style. This is a conversion van. Uh, I'll have to look up the name of the company once we get inside the van here, but it is their Mark III model. And it has been raining all day, uh, and it has finally let up, but it has gotten a little bit dirty. However, when I picked this up yesterday and it was all cleaned off, uh, it was perfect. We've got ourselves a spare tire back here on the end and there is not any rust on the outside of this thing that I can see. It is a little dirty like right here. That's fine. Many times you have issues with the drip rail up top, uh, especially in front here getting a little bit rusty, but there's no rust there. And as far as exterior imperfections, it's just really with some of the uh, the graphics that are on here are kind of fading. There's like a tiny little ding there, but nothing crazy. All the lights and everything work. Uh, and then I did notice that it does look like the bumper was dinged here, probably on the end, and it's got just a little bump in it right there. Uh, but really, you can't tell. and pop the driver's door here open and you guys can see the interior there the wood does show a little bit of wear but that's to be expected for a 28 year old vehicle We've still got original stickers everywhere on here not only there but in the door and the inside is completely original. As you can see, just over 105,000 miles. I've put on 167 so far, and it has not even used a half a tank of gas yet. Factory tape deck. We have an air conditioner in here. AC heat. We also have cruise control power windows and power locks, and those all work too. Passenger side is just as nice. There is a little fade on the carpets, uh, but that's also, I think, to be expected for such an old vehicle. But the rest of the interior is very, very nice. No cracks in the dashboard or anything. Since it's a vehicle from 1995, we do have an ashtray. And then we have a little glove box here. And inside of the glove box, we've got the original owner's manual. So here's the full owner's manual for the van itself. Oop, it's upside down. Not only do you have the full Chevy van manual here, you have a warranty manual in here. And then this is for your Mark III conversion. Uh, so this van was sent to a, this company, which there's also some stickers and things in here from that and the original uh, build codes. 
which is amazing that all these stickers are still here. Uh, but inside of this, you have the original tag, price tag. In 1995, and some of you guys could tell me, I don't know if they had the large window stickers like they, uh, they do now. But in 1995, this van sold for over $28,000. And $28,000 in today's money is just over $55,000. So there's the value, I guess. Obviously, this van is not worth $55,000, nor did I pay anywhere near $28,000 for this. Uh, but when this came out in 1995, this was one of the, the classiest vehicles you could get, probably unless you went into something, you know, European like a Mercedes. But... Uh, Cadillac obviously did not offer a van. So to go along with this, we've got our Mark Mark III manual here, and it kind of gives some information. We have some more information. Oop. If you're hearing fireworks, it's almost the 4th of July. Uh, but they go through some of the information. I believe this is out of Florida, yes. So this van was was sent to this company in Florida when it was purchased new and they did the conversion. I believe what that means is not only did they build the entire interior, they built the door panels and things like that, uh, but they installed these windows. So these two windows in the door here would have been factory, I believe. And then the two windows in the back doors are factory, but these camper style windows on both sides would have been installed by the conversion company. And this does have a slider down here with a screen. We'll check that out when we get inside the back there. Uh, so we've got our price. And then right here, we've got our checkoff list. So everybody that worked on this van in 1995, and it looks like it was in January of 1995 by this 111 there, uh, signed off for their team. So cabinetry, interior walls and door panels, sewing, seat shop, carpeting, insulation and walls, electrical, etc. were all done by the conversion company and then signed off on. Let's go ahead and just pop this back in there quick. This tag is for the graphics package and like that's the number that the package was, but Go ahead and close this up here. This should twist automatically, but it's a little sticky, so it does not. But that's okay. There we go. Uh, as far as the seats, this does not spin around uh, to turn backwards. I wish it would. So that's probably something that'll be uh, on the that to-do list. A little center console, the wood ones that these vans used to have. I'd like something there because these do not work very well as cup holders. Uh, but why don't we pop this door open? There we go. And then this one does all also open here. And they will open farther. You can uh, kind of pull on this or something. I don't know how that works quite yet. But we've got door pockets here. To see that the elastic isn't all completely worn out is pretty cool. There's nothing in this door, and these are all just like wooden panels, and they were covered in carpet by the conversion company. So all this stuff could be modified or removed. Uh, these doors are gonna be hollow inside, so maybe you could recess a little cupboard in there. Uh, but here we have the, the middle seats. These do not spin or anything either. Uh, they are adjustable forward and backward. And then you do have armrests. You know what? I've never actually checked to see if it swivels. No, there's no way that swivels. Okay, I figured I probably should actually check. And then right here, and I don't know if this is a factory thing or if this was added by a previous owner, uh, but you've got a set of curtains right here on this track. I think it might be factory. Uh, let's check those out a little bit I've got it stuffed back here so if you want some privacy in the back you can spread these out and kind of drape it over the front seat there and have a bit of privacy in the back and then let me 
pull these seats forward if I can here. In the back, you've got a full bench seat. It does have armrests on both sides. It has an armrest that comes down here in the middle. Uh, there isn't any cabinetry back here. I think maybe at one point there was, given some of these screws and things like that. Uh, at one point there was also probably curtains mounted up here, and those are no longer there. Uh, but that's something that we can go ahead and do. You can see that a previous owner was using Velcro, maybe, uh, to hang some curtains there. Uh, but the back seat, if you go ahead and lift up on it, pull it forward, bam. It does fold down into a bed, and I have not got on that thing yet, so let's see what I can do. See how it, how it lays. It could use a little bit of a vacuum back here, but this seat was also removed at one point, uh, judging by the way the bolts look. So they probably had something else back here. I'm not sure if I can even lay down in this thing. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Check that out. I could lay down lengthwise. It's kind of a tight fit, but it would do. Uh, looking up here from laying on my bed, you've got a little vent. So there's a rear vent channel here. Uh, you've got a vent there, there, one above the door there, and one right there also. Along with that, you do have these lights. There is a switch up there on the dash, right there, and you can turn the, the system on or off. I think it's turned off right now. But... When it's turned on, these lights aren't on, and then you hit them one way, either way, and they will turn on. Why don't I do that for you quick, just to show it to you. Auto interior lights, we've got those. Oh, well, they're on now. Did I not have it on? Maybe it won't work because the doors are open. Probably why that switch isn't working like that, because the doors are open. But you do have dome light, front and rear. Got some nice woodworking and paneling and stuff up here. Uh, over here, behind the driver's seat, you have one cup holder, another ashtray, of course, which is a little crusty on the bottom. And then there is just a little, I want to assume that's maybe kind of supposed to have been used as possibly a trash can or something. Uh, and what else? It looks like, like I haven't really even looked through a lot of this stuff. I can't put the seat back. Looks like there's a vent on the floor right here. That's probably an intake vent for the AC units or something like that. But it's just a good chilling van. Uh, not a high roof and that's fine with me. Let me turn those lights off so I don't kill my battery. And uh, I have a feeling this is going to be a very fun uh, fun van to have. Uh, we will probably end up at some point, obviously pulling all of this stuff out of here. And we will uh, do ourselves a build out. I would like to kind of keep it somewhat uh, period correct, so to speak. So I'm not sure if I'll m try to match some of this wood or if this entire roof and everything will be gutted back here also uh, that is yet to be seen uh, but we do have some things that we would need to get done i am going to be taking this on a trip very soon and uh, so i need to kind of go through and do all the basic maintenance stuff before we really worry about any of this and for those of you that don't know this right here is considered the doghouse so this entire thing will remove and your engine is basically right there. I'll go out and pop the hood and show you guys what you can see from the front, but it is not much. Pop my shoes back on in here. We'll leave the bed down for now, it's all right. As you can see, no rust or anything down here. Uh, let's go ahead. 
pop the hood for you. the knob there we go and there you go you can barely not even see the engine down in there but everything under here looks very clean also the battery is from uh, the battery is just about a year old it looks like and everything looks like it's to be well taken care of there's no rust it's not super grimy or anything like that and uh, yeah everything looks good sure that's closed I don't need to pop that to pop open on me but yeah gorgeous fan uh, as far as any other imperfections that I can see it will need to have these uh, the little wind windows things replace this one is kind of loose so it does not uh, close very well but this is one of the coolest things about these vans is the wing, wing windows the fact that dealers and manufacturers got away with this so you have your AC setting here which is pushing air in and then if you just need a little vent you can just roll around like that so I'll get those replaced that's not it's like a $25 item I believe uh, and it's fairly easy to do and then uh, Everything looks nice under here. There is a little knob right here for a vent that you can open right here and that is not attached. So I gotta figure out how to redo that. But that's about it, I think. Yeah. I love the fact that it's got a nice blue interior. I like the color blue. My wife already wants a fancy paint job on here like a boogie vid. So we'll see if we do anything crazy like that. This is gonna stay stock height. Uh, maybe get a little rake to it. Uh, it's gonna stay two wheel drive for the time being because there's really no reason that I need two four wheel drive vehicles. This is kind of gonna be a yin to yang thing between this and my truck. I have a big four wheel drive truck uh, and I'm not getting rid of that either. So that will need to probably get rebuilt prior to the first snow because the goal and the hope is to have this thing hibernate over the winters uh, and then we'll use the truck for those kind of adventures. But, uh, I don't know. I'm really excited and I'm kind of honored to have this thing because to find something like this that has been so well taken care of uh, is kind of getting, getting really hard to do. Uh, the market for these is pretty strong right now, especially the Chevy vans. And the majority of the ones that you find, they're going to be the long wheelbase. Uh, a lot of the conversions vans are gonna have the high roof on them. If I were to come into uh, finding a roof that fit this, I may cut the top and put a, a mid-rise or a high-rise fiberglass roof on there that would have been something like the factory uh, or the conversion company put on. But everything is clean. Let me see if I can show you underneath quick. It's gonna be wet, but hopefully I can show you guys that there's no there's no like major rust or anything under there. Had a fairly new exhaust done. It's dirty, but it's not rusty. There you go. You can tell this was a southern vehicle for a long time. Yeah, super stoked to have this thing. Hopefully I can keep it nice. It has these uh, little plastic things. I think that's to help line the latch up and they are missing on the front doors. You can see it's been broken off so we might end up replacing those also. Uh, not really concerned with this. That rattle does annoy you when you're driving down the road though. No glove box or anything over here because there isn't much room. But you can see down here, it's very clean. You've got a, a floor vent here that's adjustable up or down. Uh, you do have a vent over here, I think. Yeah, check that out. 
Door panels are great. Bam. Just a clean, clean piece of history here. Here in Nebraska, uh, you can put vintage plates on. Uh, so they have two different options when your vehicle is 30 years old or older, and this is 28 years old, so I'm getting close to that. Uh, but you can run what is known as a historical plate, which will just be like a plain white plate and it'll stay historical on it. Or you can find license plates from the year that the vehicle was manufactured and you can run those. I don't know if that means that you have like a, a usage limit throughout the year, uh, something I'd have to look into, but I do think it is cool that it's old enough. This is the oldest vehicle that, no, I had a, I had a 94 Grand Prix once. So I did have something that was older than this, but 28 years old. It's probably older than some of you guys out there watching these videos. Hopefully I can do this thing justice. Uh, but I think I'm going to go ahead and close this one out here, guys. We are definitely going to have a bunch of camping coming up. Like I said, I've got a trip coming up, but I have some other things that I also need to get done uh, to the van before we go do anything. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, stay tuned for the next adventure. I'll see you in a bit.